So I'm, I really am excited to be here. I, I'm wanting to share my passion for photography, um, you know, with you all. And, you know, and I also want to thank Creative Life for bringing me here and sharing it. This is actually the third workshop that, that I've done. Um, I'm a working photographer and uh, I don't get a, a chance often enough to share, you know, my knowledge. So I'm really excited that um, in this beautiful forum that I'm able to do that. I, I really wanted to thank the, uh, the, the six attendees here. You know, um, me and Penny, my wife, we went through all the videos that were submitted and we hand selected you all because each and every one of you have something special um, that we saw and uh, you know we just think that you guys are amazing and uh, thanks again for coming along. So I want to first of all share a little bit about what it means to me as a photographer and it, this I want to share a story with you to start with and it's a little bit uh, an insight into the philosophies and and the thoughts are about how I go about what I do. So I'm going to share a uh, story. It was a very recent wedding. And, uh, and it's Diana and Juan, and they had two weddings. Um, the first one was out at, uh, just about an hour outside of Sydney in Barrow. It's a beautiful part of Australia. And the second one was in China. And one of the things that um, they did was, you know, they sent me an email just before I came to Creative Live. And so I want to share that with you. And I'm just going to read, uh, read it straight from um, her email. She says, Dear Marcus, these are absolutely beautiful. After the wedding, even during the wedding, hundreds of photos from friends, iPhones and DLSRs appeared on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I thought I'd seen them all. But these are absolutely refreshingly new. Juan and I both agree that some of the best moments at our wedding day were just spent with you in the paddocks. These moments were just magical. The Chinese audience will be gobsmacked by these, and I can't wait to show them. She then went on to say, you know, something that was really special to her. A, a, a series of, that was significant, and I, I took a sequence of shots, and I wanted to, uh, to just share with you that sequence because there was one image that really stood out to her. Dad has naturally assumed a leadership role in all his relationships throughout his life. To me, his only child, he has certainly been an unwavering pillar of strength and inspiration. He has seen me through my weakest and most vulnerable. This photo, however, managed to capture an unprecedented role reversal. Dad has never rested his head on my shoulder before. So this simple and fleeting gesture is steeped in meaning. It speaks of vulnerability, trust, relief, and acceptance, which was everything I felt from him in those two seconds. My facial expression and tight grasp showed perfectly that I was both scared of leaving him and resolved to show him I would be just fine. It is also enlightening. You managed to catch a suggestion of a smile on Dad's cheek. So regardless of the complex emotions exchanged between father and daughter, this image to me is about joy. And that's what I love about what we get to do. You know, it's such a special thing that we're invited into these people's lives and we're able to experience that and be able to capture these moments. And this is what I love wedding photography so much. And this is what I want to share with you over the three days is how powerful and incredible wedding photography is. You know, it's these stories that, that I want to capture at every wedding I go to. And so over the next few days, I'm going to show you some techniques, certainly. But also I'm going to try to get you the practical side as well and give you an insight into that. This is that image. This is that image she just so much loves. This is Diana's defining moment. And sometimes as photographers, we can get so caught up and think about what we love as photographers, technically, you know, composition, lighting, you know, the moment and, and so forth. But often we forget about who is most important. And that's our customer, our couple that we're photographing. These are their moments. And this is why we're there 
to be able to capture those. So if, to be able to do that, we need to be able to connect with our client. We need to be able to make sure that we understand who they are, get to know them as much as possible so we can identify moments when these things happen that we can capture them. Because I was the only one really that noticed that whole sequence happening at that wedding. And I was able to know the importance and the significance of it and be able to capture that. And that's what I want to share with you over the next three days is how we can do that. How we can, you know, bring a piece of us to the wedding day that enables us to see these things. So the best way to explain this is to share a little bit about me, a little bit about my experience, a little bit about my story. This is my dad. This is the reason why I'm in photography. And, you know, over the next few days, you know, I may reflect on how significant this has been for me. But it was his influence and his interest in photography that led me to where I am today. You know, when uh, my grandparents um, passed away, you know, and uh, it was back in the early 90s, and I came across this box full of photographs. And in there, I came across these images, just like these. And I was just wowed. You know, because at the time, in the early 90s, the, the most, I guess, most photography, you know, was a bit, I would say, stale, or very staged, with no story, no feeling. And then I came across these images, and they were full of life, taken in the 1950s. And it really just resonated with me, like a little spark went out, you know, and it caught my eye. You know, at the same time, I went to a friend's wedding and had a professional photographer that for one reason or another, I just actually didn't think that was very professional at all. You know, I just guess I had high expectations, um, you know, when I was attending that wedding and how he conducted himself. But more importantly, and my friends felt this as well, the people, the couple that were in the photos, is that those photos didn't even represent who they were. They didn't even give an insight at all into their personality. You know, so while they were pretty photographs, really it didn't mean anything to them. And so this was another significant thing that happened. This is me, sadly enough. Back in 1996, man, like, I'm so glad I'm not this person anymore, <laughs> for, for many reasons. But I was working for a bank, probably around this time, about six years, seven years, and I honestly found it soul destroying. Every day I was there, I just hated it. In fact, you know, I was talking to my, one of my best mates like back at home the other day and it reminded me, you know, and we used to sit there and we planned like our, both of us were planning like something new and exciting for each of us that was going to be life changing. We were going to go over to Europe and, you know, and, and travel for a while and that's where I, you know, really became a photographer. And, but before then, we would spend half the day ringing each other, telling each other how much we hated each other's jobs. You know, you know it was just... And like, you know, my wife was looking at me and through that time and she just noticed me as a person declining. You know, I was getting more and more depressed. I was living for the weekends. In fact, I didn't even feel like I was living most of the time. I was locked in to somewhere that I hated. And I guess because at the time, you know, people said like, you know, you've got to stay at this job. You know, you've got benefits, you know, you've got like a solid wage, you know, you're stupid for leaving. But you know what, I just knew that I had to make a different part of my life. And that's where photography got into it. And it felt so right. And then I came back to this. My dad passed away when I was a teenager. And he left me with, with his camera and three manuals on photography plus some other things. And from there, my journey started as a photographer. And as soon as I picked up the camera, like I think like many of you, it's like this bug that hits you. It just pulls you in and you just want to keep photographing, you want to learn, you want to keep going. And I can honestly say that's exactly the same now. 
It doesn't matter wherever I get to. I'm always looking forward. I'm looking how I can better myself. How can I be better? And it all started, you know, about 17, 18 years ago when I first picked up that camera. You know, there's a lot of hard things about what we do, though. You know, and we've got to come over challenges all the way. One of the things that happened, and I didn't tell people this for a long time, is that when my father was in photography business, his business failed and he went bankrupt. And you know, like any guy or son or daughter, my dad is my hero, you know? And here I am thinking, here I want to pursue this career, but how could I be successful at that if he failed? You know, and for that, for a long time, really was an issue for me. So probably in the first two, three, even four years of business, I had to overcome that because I was failing, because I guess I felt that how could I be successful. So I was just so lucky to have the support of Penny to support me, encourage me, be there. You know, and for the first couple of years, I made like a $20,000 as a loss. And it was only because of her that I was able to get through. And then the next year later, you know, it turned around, you know, and I was making $20,000. And this is probably working like 80, 90 hours a week. You know, it was ridiculous. So things had to give. Things had to change. I had to believe in myself. And as soon as I started believing in myself, things changed. But, you know, as photographers, there's a huge sacrifice that we give. You know... Like I said, I'm a working photographer. Last year, you know, I shot 52 weddings, you know, all around the world. And the studio shot probably 30, 40 more. I love it. I loved every one of those. But you know, there is a huge cost, you know, as photographers as well. And so sometimes like I'm divided because here I used to work in a bank that I absolutely hated, you know? But then now I get to do what I love. You know, like I would just do a 24-7 if I could. But, you know, I got home just after my last trip, just after the wedding in Guam, and Penny turned to me and I was saying, oh, man, that's 52 weddings. And she just said, you know what? We miss you. Because I was hardly home. You know, and sometimes I get drawn from what I love doing. But as wedding photographers, you need to know that there's a sacrifice that you give, each and every one of you. So much time you give to other people's families and friends that you're celebrating with them and not your own family. So sometimes there's a cost. Luckily for me, my photography gives me so much. You know, it's like capturing that image of Diana, how it means, how fleeting that moment was, but now she can cherish that moment forever. And as you'll see, and I actually ran Diana after that call and was chatting and chatting, and one of the reasons why I saw that moment is because I reflected on my own life. I remember when I was about eight years old and going to my brother's wedding, and, you know, it was a bad time. Like, I think it was like the, as in, not the wedding was a bad time, but fashion was a bad time. <laughs> like, I remember my brother in a brown suit and the big fluffy sort of cravat. You know what I mean? It was crazy, you know. And uh, after the wedding, though, like, my granddad, who's as stern as they come, had never hugged me ever, never told me that he loved me. And he went up to my brother and he just touched him, you know, on the side of his arm and just nodded. And in that moment, like God, it's like, he loves us. He really loves us. He never shows it. And it was just so subtle. So when I see something like that on, on, uh, with Diana's wedding, is that I connect with that immediately. I see that love. I know how important it, it is feels. 
You know, how often, like in our lives, have we felt vulnerable? You know, wondering about, and spend our lives wondering, you know, are our parents going to really, really tell us what they mean to us? Some people go their whole life and they never get to hear it. But you know, at weddings, what I loved is people tell each other how much they care about each other. It's amazing. It's just so incredible. So I want to share with you, you know, that you don't have to feel like that person in that photo. Is that you can reach up and grab it. And then I understand as well because it's taken me a long time to get to where I am today. And it still challenges. There's always challenges coming, you know, my way and that I have to overcome them. And that's where you've got to rise above each time and pick yourself up from the ground and just keep going. You know, because there's a lot at stake. You know, and the reason why there's a lot at stake is that because I don't want to go back to that. You know, I just can't. You know, it was just, I never want to go back to that place. But one of the things is that about wedding photography is that you have to be here for the right reasons. You've got to understand that this is a once in a lifetime event for the people that you're photographing. And if you get it wrong and you don't understand exactly what you're getting into, you know, I believe that you're doing yourself a disservice, but you're also giving that couple a disservice. Because imagine if moments like those ones that I've shown you already just went uncaptured. Sure, you know, the couple will still feel it. But imagine giving them that gift of those images that brings them back exactly to that point in time. You know, that, that, that love with your partner. You know, mar marriage is tough. It's so hard. It's like a, you've got to work hard at that. But you know what? Like, you know, think of a couple 20 years from now. Just things aren't going right. Things are really hard. But they look back at a moment in how they looked at each other. They take him back to that day and go, man, I love this guy. You know, when people are gone, you know, like people pass, like grandparents or parents, they can go back to that moment and go, I remember that moment. I remember that day. It was just incredible and I've got this memory. And that's what I believe, that each and every one of you have a gift. And if you want to be a wedding photographer, it's an incredible journey and it offers so much. And, you know, if you really believe in it and you really love it so much, is that hopefully over the next three days I can give you as much insight into creating powerful images that where you are giving a true gift to the people that you're photographing. So when I started photography, you know, I was off you know, and went on different directions. And at first, I loved photographing landscapes and streets photography. And that was really my passion at the time. And wedding photography, I, I liked it. You know, I really did. But it wasn't my true passion. But then I went to a seminar and saw these great international photographers, you know, commercial photographers, and saw this amazing body of work throughout the entire day. And naively, I went up to them afterwards because I've seen this incredible amount and I had this burning question I wanted to ask them. And I said, man, this is just incredible work. I love it. And I said, when do you get the time to do the work that you, you love doing? You know, like I said, I was naive. They just looked at me blankly and they said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, like, this is incredible and you're so busy. When do you get the time to do the stuff that you really love? And still, they, you know, like, didn't understand. And he said to me, he said, Marcus, everything that we showed you today, that's our passion. That's what we love photographing. This is what we do. And it was like this huge sledgehammer that just hit me. And for the next five days, I ran away and thought about it. What, 
I guess the space I was from is that I come from a, a real basic working class background. When I grew up and all the people around me, they didn't, they would never say that you could do something that you loved and get paid for it. And this is what this photographer told me. He said, you know what? We do what we love and it just happens that we get paid really well for it. He says, we're living the dream. You know, and here I was thinking, my dream is photography. But I was failing at it. And the reason why I was failing at it is because I realised the thing that I did like doing was the landscapes and the streetscapes. And weddings was paying the bill and I had to even make the decision of which way I was going to go. And why I was failing is because I didn't have the passion in the weddings that I was doing. And so what I did is that I brought everything that I loved about landscapes, the big, open, wide, picturesque places, and I decided to bring that into my wedding photography. I took everything about emotion and the storytelling elements about in the streetscape stuff that I loved doing, and I brought that into my wedding photography. All of a sudden, I loved it. Weddings became the thing that I loved most doing. And that was some like, you know, 12 years ago. And it's still exactly the same. And as soon as that happened, my business started taking off. Because what I was doing at the time was something totally different. Totally different to what other people were doing. You know, and I was told also that you couldn't do that. You couldn't do the style of photography. You couldn't even do the sort of business techniques that I was doing at the time. So how many times have that been told to you guys? You know, that you don't do it that way. You can't do it that way. You know, or, you know, they're saying that, no, you, look, your style's different, it's off. You know what I mean? Everyone's doing this, you need to do that. You know what? If you go now into business books and learn all the greatest things about business and being successful is that you need to be different to what everyone else is doing. You need to be different, you know, because if you're just going to do and be what everyone else is doing, you're just a bad copy of that and you're not going to stand out. And that's where I was lucky, you know, is that I found this passion that I love what I'm doing, and then people loved it. And we started booking more and more weddings. Now, things were far from perfect. You know, if I'm honest, I'm not really that great at business. You know, I'm not. But what happened was, is that my photography was, and has always been, is the foundation of our business. And, you know, like, I just, because I came from like a fine art background, I just loved working every image to the point that, you know, I was spending the whole week, you know, just working every image. So I was never ever seeing, had time to be with couples or clients. And so I had to learn and gradually over those three, four years is that I made changes. I saw and was able to eventually identify things that I was doing wrong. And I was also seeking advice, you know, but outside the photography world. You know, and as soon as those things started to happen, you know, I started to progress. And it's been a slow journey, you know, over a long period of time, just so I can do what I love doing. And it continues to be that way. So I want to show you something in a second and about I'm going to definitely take you through some technical aspects. But one of the things that I think that will really make a huge difference is drawing on your own life experiences. You know, because I believe that your photography should be an extension of who you are personally. And when you look at it that way, it's going to make you unique because you're going to see the world so different to the person sitting next to you. Totally different. You know, and then what's going to be great is that people that are looking for you 
and want your style, they're going to be attracted to you because you're differentiating yourself in the marketplace. And it can be just as easy as that, expressing who you are continually. And that's why we're going to have a, over the next three days, is a, like a contest, is I want to hear your stories. I want to hear your stories about, you know, some of the challenges that you face, both personally and in business. Or I want to hear a personal story about, you know, what maybe you've seen at an image. Just like I mentioned about my, my granddad, about just that slight touch of a hand. And now, on a wedding day, I see that. I want you to tell me about your story as well. And I want to hear that story from all around the world, wherever you are. I want to know how you got to where you are, even or where you want to be and what your dreams are. So I want to share this photo with you. So this is Kimberly, the bride. And when you first look at it, you see like a fun photo booth moment, just a random moment at a wedding. But I want to tell you it's so much more than that. That is image of the bride is with her brother, Brenton. And what I love is that her little niece is like looking at it, wondering what the hell they're doing in that photo booth. Then across the way is another little niece and her uncle, you know, just sorting out the photos and looking at the ones that everyone else has done that night. And behind them is another uncle and aunt. And in fact, that uncle is her godfather. So when we first think of that image, is that we think of it as a simple photo booth. But this is a monumental moment for Kimberly that I was able to capture. And I knew that. That's why I ran across part of the room to get that shot. Because I knew those relationships. I knew the people. And that's what's important about we need to know who is there on the wedding day. It's like a, like a, a football match, you know, like the Super Bowl. You know, is that you need to know the plays. You know, the players and the plays ahead, and you need to know everything about that. It's no different. On a wedding day, is that you need to know who everyone is there, their relationships, what's up. And you can learn those easily. Little by little, and even on the day itself, you'll get little bits of information from the very first phone call or Skype call or email that you get from your, your couple. And you can just jot those down. And I'll, I'll talk about how we can really plan for weddings. But I stuck this up on our Facebook business page, this image. Lots of people loved it, liked it. You know, and then a photographer got on and made a comment and said, you know what? I don't know, I don't get this image. There's a lot going on. You know, it's very, very busy. And knowing me, if you know me, like I'll just sort of, you know, not worry about it and just ignore it. Anyway, the next day I got back onto Facebook, I was just having a quick look, and I noticed the bride got on and made a comment. So that comment she wrote, love, laughter and a family inside joke is what's going on. I just loved Kimberly's response because that's what I saw. And that's what was most important as well. Is sometimes, you know, and, and I get caught up in this sometimes as well. You know, you go over, you know, you're at home or you're at the studio or, you know, at the office and you get onto a photographer's blog and you go, wow, look at those amazing shots. How can I do that? You know, like I'm no good. I'm there, you know what I mean? I get, I'm really fortunate. I've got some amazing photographer friends all around the world. Some of them like are really, really well known. And it, when we're on one-on-one -on -one and we just might be just having a, you know, a quiet beer or wine or just going off shooting together, we'll open it up and we'll be honest to each other. And they'll say to me, or I'll say to them, and I'll say, you know what, I just don't know where my photography is at the moment. I just don't, it doesn't feel right. You know, like I feel like I'm no good anymore. You know what, 
These are some of the greatest photographers in the world telling me this. And you know what I tell you? And I'll go, I know exactly what you mean. I feel exactly the same. And here you think, like, you know, that, you know, these great photographers, you know, that they think everything's perfect. It's not. But one of the most important things to know is that is because if we believe in ourselves too much, is that's where we'll stop. If we're not continuing to learn, that's where we'll stop. And that's where we'll go back to that passport photo because we'll lose it. We'll lose that passion for what we do. And so we're continually learning just like you guys, always learning, always trying to be inspired. But one of the things that is really important to know is that when we're photographing a wedding, is that we're not photographing for other photographers, is that we're not trying to impress our fellow photographer. The most important thing that we, of who we've got to impress, who do you think? Bride. That's right, the bride, the groom, the mother of the, the bride and the groom. Everyone at that wedding is the most important person that we've got to impress. And that's all you've got to remember is that you constantly remember that. It doesn't matter what some photographer thinks about your work. Those photographers are not going to put food on your table. You know, if we get caught up, I was, you know, I was really fortunate to go do a destination wedding and when I do, I try to catch up with some photographers and a photographer that I really love and admire his work was, was saying to me that, you know, we just had a conversation last night with his wife and, and that he felt like that he started to lose his way because he was entering competitions, you know, around the world and, and then he was going to weddings and starting to think about these competitions and he found himself starting to shift the focus and when he was shooting, was thinking at the back of his mind about, oh, I could shoot this for the competition. This is going to be wow. And he lost focus. And his wife saw it. He said, you know, I'm seeing something just not just there at the moment. Now, this guy is just so passionate and I have a huge respect for him. And he started seeing it and then he saw it as well and totally changed. He forgot about the competitions. He forgot and he re refocused on what he does best is capturing amazing moments for his bride and groom and the people at the wedding. And it's so important to remember that. Also, you know, is that, sure, like competitions are important, but afterwards, you know what I mean? When you're reviewing your work, you know, you might come across an image, but you know what? I reckon nine times out of 10, like if you saw like a, an award-winning image, is that, you know, that probably isn't the bride and groom's favorite image. You know, photographically, it's probably great. But what does it mean to the couple? But this is where I want to capture moments like this. And I want the couples to feel it. I want the couples to remember it. And that's what I believe is our even moral obligation to deliver to our clients. You know, so there is a huge importance about being a wedding photographer. And I believe if you're not feeling that way, then I think wedding photography is not for you. And just like me is that if you questioning it, then you have to ask yourself the big question and you either change and become hugely passionate about it or simply just choose another part of photography. You know, it's okay. But the good thing is that to know to change now, then leave it five years and no, during that five years is that you weren't able to really deliver truly for these people. Because remember, they only get one crack at it. You know, you get another go next weekend. And that's one of the things that I always keep in the back of my mind, is that sure, you know, we've got a good reputation, we've got a good business, and I could have an off day. But you know what? What I believe in is that I know, and I have to live with, is that if I have that off day, that couple has to live with that for the rest of their lives. And that doesn't sit well with me. And that's the attitude that I bring to every wedding, is that when you get to a wedding, you have to be on. You have to, like, you know, immediately, like, take charge, 
with yourself to know that you're going to deliver the best possible results that day, no matter what's happening in your life. You know, no matter if you got up and you did something wrong and you're having an argument with your wife or, you know, vice versa and, you know, you've got to forget about that. You've got to put that out of your whole system and you've got to put your game face on, you know, and that's so important. So this is what Who Studio Impressions is. It's not Marcus Bell. You know, I don't trade under Marcus Bell. It's Studio Impressions Photography. And I have six amazing staff members that, and also an amazing wife, that work in the studio and make Studio Impressions happen. And each of them feel exactly the same way. They are passionate about photography and about what they're doing. Even like our people that um, look after our admin are photographers. Now, in a business way, it's probably not the best way of doing it. But you know what? Is that I have people at the studio that are passionate about what they do. They know my passion. And even though I drive them crazy a lot of the times, you know, is that they support me. They believe in what I do. And as a result, I believe in them as well. So one of the things that I want to let you know is that the foundation of Studio Impressions Photography is what it is. It's the photography. You know, like, I'm not brilliant at marketing. I'm not brilliant at networking. I'm not, you know, I don't know, we're going to talk about, like, personalities later. Is that, you know, like, I'm not exuberantly, I'm not so, you know, um, outgoing. I'm, I'm really actually quiet. I'm really reserved. I'm often shy. You know, but I let my photography do the talking for me. And I find like-minded people and couples that see something. They see an image on the website and it may be like a, like a, a grandparent embracing their granddaughter. They see that, they connect with that. And they say, you know what, that's what I want my wedding photography to be. And they're just so engaging. And then it's just like it's a perfect match. And that's where if you're trying to be like everyone else, is that you're really getting clients that out there that are going to fit everyone else and not you. And that's what like, I'm so blessed with, is that when I get to go to a wedding, the couples just let me do what I do because they know that's what I do best. They're not telling me, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, because they know what I'm great at. You know, and they just let me do it. And I just love that. I just love that about the couples that I get to photograph. So over the next three days, we're going to go through so much. We're going to go break down a whole real wedding. We're going to go through my equipment, the settings that I use, and we're going to emulate as much as possible, you know, some of the wedding days. You know, with bridal prep, what are the things going through my mind? The things like, you know, light, you know, composition, creating the set, you know, making it like the best experience possible. We also will do what I love tomorrow, if possible. This is rain dependent. We are in Seattle, <laughs> all right. So, you know, but we've got lots of plans. Um, so day two and day three may get mixed up a little bit. We may swap things around. Like, you know, one of the things that I'm passionate about is, is uh, producing a great image and in using tools available to us like Photoshop and Lightroom. Sometimes they're just really, really subtle. And I want to take you through all of those techniques. One of the other things that we'll do is that we'll like, do a real ceremony and a real reception. And that's going to be great. We've got a really great couple and, uh, and, their, and their family as well. And uh, now they're already married, but we're going to reenact their, their wedding and I'm going to go through and how we need to be able to think about where we need to be, um, when and how we should be capturing a, a wedding ceremony. And also like, you know, the receptions, you know, all these amazing moments that happen there. Um, like I said, we're going to go through Photoshop techniques. So how do we take an image from this, gradually use the raw data that we can really extract out all the information and then, and then pop it? You know, like make it a beautiful signature image that will hang on our client's walls and then they're going to cherish. You know what I mean? So I'll take you through that. And, to, and with that, we've got like free presets and actions that we've done up just for Creative Live. And so you can go to our site, download them, and we'll use those 
together. So as I'm using and working images, you can use, do exactly, and you can follow me what I'm doing so you understand. Um, we'll also go through like workflow technique. You know, because like, you know, remember, like I said, like one of the big problems that I had is that I want to spend all my time like working images. Do you guys feel that sometimes? Like you're always in front of a computer? You know, when we first started out, we would spend three, four days like editing an, an entire wedding just at the proof stage. And back then, like couples hadn't even pu um, purchased anything yet. I mean, how crazy is that? But it was, it was smart business on one point of view is because we looked incredible. Every image looked amazing, you know? And that got us so many weddings because people were sharing their photos and go, wow, this is great. You know, and so we we're getting more business in. But we we're spending all our time doing that. We didn't have time to see clients. How ludicrous is that? You know, and that's the things that you learn in business. So, you know, between me and Adam that's been with me for 10 years, he's a great photographer as well, and check out his work if you get the opportunity, you know, is that we learned ways and we taught ourselves how to, like, you know, process 800 images, like, in one to two hours instead of spending three days. And we're going to share that with you. We're going to share those techniques um, with you. Hey, Marcus. Yeah. That was incredibly, incredibly beautiful and inspirational. And I just want to share with you some of what people are saying online because they are just passionate about what you're saying too. So Susan, what have we got? Um, BS Photo Design, who is from Brazil, said, I've been studying photography for 15 years and I always thought I wasn't ready. I had to study more, have better equipment, whatever, and I saw all these people who had absolutely none of the official training I thought necessary working and making a living from photography. Now I finally have the guts to go for it. Just wish I had done it earlier. And uh, we have Sally who said, he is absolutely incredible. This is by far the best explanation for wedding photography that I have seen. And Redbird Photography said, I'm getting chills. Marcus is speaking to that little part of me right now that always says, I don't know, Meg, what are we doing? I'm really glad he's taking the time to say that his only opinion that really matters is that of the client. So mm -hmm. people are definitely connecting. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you. I want to give one more shout out actually yeah. <laughs> because Roberto Valenzuela is watching. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Roberto, we love you. And Roberto says, everybody, this course with Marcus Bell is very special to me. The reason is he was one of my very first photographers I truly admired. He was an inspiration to me to reach great heights in wedding photography. Everyone should get this course. I consider Marcus one of the few true great masters of wedding photography. Well, thank you, Roberto. He's an amazing guy and just love him. So thank you very much for those beautiful words. For me, you know, like over the next few days, like I'm going to give you my all. I'm not holding anything back. You know, so anything you want to know, like I'm an open book. Like, I mean, I photographed 52 weddings last year. I don't have time to do workshops, you know, but the thing I love is I love sharing what I get to do because, you know, like, you know, like I found a new life in wedding photography and it's given me a life and if I can share that with you and if you have that same passion I want to share as much knowledge as I can so you can do exactly what you want to do as well and so anything you want to know like just hit the desk you know type it in and uh, and and you guys as well here just ask away honestly it's it's I just want to give 